welcome, I'm Lloyd and this is The Dressing Gown Diary. It's a special review show of week three because it was a historic weekend of the Autumn International Series in 2018. We won't spend any time previewing the, the fourth weekend, that will come later on in the week. Let's start off by looking at some of the action. So what happened? England opened up against Japan and found themselves in a losing position pretty quickly on. Eddie Jones has pushed his team did they find a way to come through? They did in the end, but Japan showed great spirit. Leach is a massive servant to Japanese rugby, and I'm sure he'll be a big poster boy for the World Cup in 2019. It was a great performance from the Japanese, but ultimately didn't quite have enough. Wales opened up like there was no tomorrow. It looked like a penalty try within two minutes. It looked like it was going to be an absolute free-for-all. But somehow Tonga fought back. This is a Welsh side as well who brought back into the team Dan Bigger, Liam Williams. They really showed their strength in depth though. Although Tonga came back and battled hard, ultimately Wales had enough, had another gear and managed to progress the game and end up scoring some electric tries. Those of you that hasn't seen it yet, please have a look at Rhys Patchell's try. Great individual effort. And Alad uh, Davis unbelievable skill set from the whole team. Liam Williams involved twice. His finish as well, Liam Williams, the first try he scored, he was airborne, he was being tackled and somehow he managed to place the ball in the corner. Those of Saracen fans out there know his ability to find the, uh, find the, find the try line and this really did demonstrate his athleticism. It gives Gatlin some really interesting headache questions. Who does he play at 10? He's now got hands up from... Patchell, from Bigger, from uh, Ainscombe. It's a really tough call. And obviously with Liam Williams scoring two tries on his 50th cap, also raises questions about his back three. And there are other dilemmas in the second row. It really is looking pretty rosy if you've got a Welsh shirt on these days. But the Scotland, again, didn't quite have enough to get over the line against South Africa. It was a blood and thrust game. Really cracking atmosphere coming from Edinburgh. No one really wanted the game to finish, but unfortunately... They couldn't find a way of getting over the line and went down by six points against a rejuvenated South African side who will be happy to walk away from Murrayfield with a win. But the big talking point from the weekend was Ireland's historic victory against New Zealand. They have never beaten New Zealand at home. But something has changed in world rugby. New Zealand did not have the air of invincibility about them. They walked onto the pitch and Ireland were up for this like there was no tomorrow. The atmosphere was electric. I have never seen a team retain the ball as well as Ireland did. They committed men to the rucks, to the balls, to the contact areas. And what that did is suffocated the ball. So New Zealand just didn't have any. And they started giving away stupid penalties. Sam Whitelock gave away an unbelievable penalty. He's lying on the floor in an offside position because he'd made the tackle. Puts his hand up for the contact, for the pass from the scrum half. Penalty straight away. <coughs> Brody Retallick pulling in hands in for the uh, for the scrum half. These are not mistakes that the All Black team make. It's, Ireland really just suffocated the great, and it was a great finish by Stockdale in the corner for the only try of the game. So New Zealand have also only gone uh, tryless against the home nations. That's the first time since 1995. There's no question that Schmidt and Farrell are really building well to this World Cup and Ireland are serious contenders. You have to consider that now. This is without Conor Murray, who's probably their best player. And nothing shows the passion more than Johnny Sexton uh, late on in the game as he drives the guy into touch. He's there with the crowd going, Aah! getting excited. That's what we like to see. That is what rugby's all about. It was a cracking weekend. I really hope you enjoyed it and we'll preview... The final weekend of the 2018 Autumn Internationals later on in the week. But this is the Dressing Gown Diary over and out. Should give a shout out as well to my media consultant, Sof. She has recommended a, uh, a, a tripod and I hope you can all appreciate the better angle of this, this clown. <laughs>